I would like to say, God bless the family. I know you've lost a big part of the family, but from now on, God will be your crutch. I met Johnny 50 years ago at Mr. Al Brown's house, and five young lads, also a lady, used to come and rehearse with my group. And Johnny and I became very close. We didn't get a chance to talk that much because we were from different parts at that time. I was from Brooklyn and I used to just meet him at the studio. But I don't have too much to say. I just want to say, Johnny, I'll always remember you. God bless. Thank you, Eugene. Eugene Pitt. And now I'd like to bring to the microphone from Jay and the Americans, Rick Mango. Thank you. I'm gonna make this very brief. I'm not a very good speaker, so please bear with me. We used to walk up to the stage a lot faster than this years ago, and I never needed these. <clears throat> I'd like to thank you all for coming to help celebrate Johnny Maestro, the man. It would be very easy to talk about the golden voice singer. <clears throat> Name Johnny Maestro. <clears throat> but first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my close friend, John. There are places in my heart <clears throat> that will always treasure Johnny's friendship and love. There are places in my memory that will always remember his humility and generosity, <clears throat> his laughter and pain. If we measure our lives, if we measure our lives in the pleasure that we bring to others, Johnny would have had to live five more lifetimes. <clears throat> God is holding Johnny close to him right now but he will really never be any further away from us than one of his songs on the radio. It's wonderful to be praised and loved by your fans, but it's unbelievable to be loved and praised by your peers. Somehow Johnny seemed to accomplish that. I was very lucky to grow up having my idol. I'm sorry. I was lucky enough to have my idol as one of my closest friends. <laughs> I apologize. A life well lived <clears throat> is a life remembered. A great father, a great husband, a great person. That was my friend John. Just the other day, somebody referred to John as the quiet giant. A perfect title for such a humble man. Johnny never talked about himself or his talent. He let his voice do all the bragging on stage. In the last days, I was fortunate enough and privileged to be part of what Johnny loved the most, to be with family and friends, to feel the warmth of the sun on his face as he sat behind the wheel of his boat. Read 
this for me. I'm sorry. Ricky's a dear friend of the Brooklyn Bridge, of Johnny, of all of us. To be with family and friends, to feel the warmth of the sun on his face as he sat behind the wheel of his boat, and to watch the beautiful Florida sunsets. Heaven may have gained a great singer, but the world just lost a great man. God bless Johnny Meister. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Rick Mango. Now, uh, another very good friend of, of Johnny Maestro, his friend for years and years from Santo and Johnny, Johnny Farina. <laughs> Farina. Thank you. In 1959, I met Johnny. We were on a tour of the Carolinas, and he was with the Crests. At first, I didn't know how to read him, but it didn't take long to find out that he was just a quiet guy, not loud or full of himself. He needed a room to sleep in, so he joined my brother and I. From that day on, we became brothers. As time passed, we both got married, had kids. I became their Uncle Johnny. He became my kid's Uncle Johnny. We ate, drank, hunted, fished, Boat. We had boats together and had a wedding band together along with Louie and Marty from the bridge. And that was a trip. At one point, we changed our names to Joe and Joe. <laughs> we had our own handshake. And when we met, we would kiss each other on our cheek, Euro style. Johnny and I could out eat anybody. <laughs> If the food was wax, I would turn him for good. A lot of people in the record business from the old days know what wax means. Wax is good. Uh, one time in Italy, Johnny and I ate so much macaroni. Everybody calls it pasta today, but it's really macaroni. <laughs> True. He must be giving me the strength to do this because I didn't, I thought I was gonna fold, but not yet. We ate so much macaroni that the cook came out to see the two Americans who eat so much. <laughs> we could always lift. That was our term for eat. We would lift. In 1977, Johnny, his wife, Alma Jean, sent me a birthday card and it was the type of card with a lot of space. So when I sent it back for his birthday, I said, we should write something each year. I got the card back from Grace after his passing, and I put a rose petal in it from Johnny's funeral home showing in Florida. Johnny's greatest gift was when I held his hand, and he opened his eyes, and he stared at me for about five minutes, and then he passed. That was wax, and I always loved my friend. Thank you. Johnny Farina. And now I believe we have some concert, concert uh, video of Johnny Maestro. was born John Mastrangelo in Brooklyn in 1939. By the end of the 1950s, he was a lead singer of an up-and-coming group called The Crests, which included, among others, Luther Vandross's sister, Patricia. The very first big national hit, 16 Candles, wasn't even the song that was supposed to be played. Johnny Maestro recalled. Well, 16 Candles uh, happened accidentally, as a matter of fact, when we were signed to Coed Records back in 1958. Our first record was a song called Pretty Little Angel, and our second record was supposed to be a song called Beside You. And the flip side was uh, a song called 16 Candles. And I believe it was uh, Alan Freed. And he decided 
he liked the other side, so he started playing 16 Candles. Maestro was one of the few singers in history to be the lead singer of two great hit-making groups in two decades. The Crests led to the Brooklyn Bridge, but it was the fifth dimension that led Johnny Maestro to the Brooklyn Bridge's biggest hit. That tune, uh, fortunately for me, was not one of their hits, and we, the group, put our own arrangement to it, and uh, the record company picked the worst that could happen. voice has been silenced. Johnny Maestro is gone. Passed away in Florida at his hospice home. You'll Never Walk Alone, the last song performed at the last concert ever by Johnny Maestro at the Mohegan Sun Casino. Final concert in January. John Bauman of Bowser's, we know him from Sean and I was there. And he said, quote, one of the greatest singers of all time, Johnny Maestro, as frail as he looked, that's how strong he sounded. The 11-act show ran over, and I thought he would end with the worst that could happen, as was usual in long multi-act shows. But when I came out to host his exit, Johnny turned to me with a look in his eyes I'll never forget. Johnny was always quiet, but his eyes said something deep, profound, and unmistakable. One more. I need to do one more. When I asked the crowd if they wanted one more, they went wild without even knowing the underlying truth. Then Johnny Maestro and the Brooklyn Bridge sang, You'll Never Walk Alone. For the very last time. singer Johnny Maestro, who comes from Staten Island. Let's have a fine hand for them. Well, welcome to them. is this 
brothers really it's like a family it uh it really is this is our life it's just a natural thing and something that we all love and uh, would never stop doing every time we do a show we uh we encounter sometimes the same people who've been coming to our shows for decades and uh they always appreciate everything we're doing and they never stop telling us how we've affected their lives and that's a great feeling. Music is a magical medium, as we all know. It is a, it's a, it's a medium where uh, people can blend at the soul level. 
soul to soul. The audience is always different, they're fresh, you always get a different kind of reaction from the audience, and that's what we kind of feed off. It's fun. Still, to this day, it's, it's like the first time. You know, we try to try to make the uh, make every job feel fresh and new, and, and uh, like we're going on stage for the first time. What keeps us going today, I, I believe, has to be the uh, the interaction with our audiences. We uh, we meet many people who have been coming to see us through the years, decades. I mean, we see these people. We grew up with these people. We watch them grow. We watch their children grow. And uh, again, it's it's like a family thing. You know, we go to a show, it's, uh, it's so easy to get up there and, and sing and perform because you know these people, you know their reaction, you know how they love the music, and you know what it means to them. So it makes us able to, to perform the way we do. And uh, that has to be a great, great feeling. Door, and 
And I send a special prayer up to the room on the second floor. For my mind is in there with her. My body takes me home. And I need to have a love because I've been too long. introduce all the members of our group to you folks, okay? Okay, so we know them by their first name, so let's begin by introducing you to the guy who just performed that fantastic guitar solo. He's our lead guitarist, and his name is Jimmy Saul. So say hi, Jimmy! Yeah! Let's go over to the. Let's go over to the. 
to the other side of the stage. All the keyboard work that you've been hearing this evening, along with some vocals too. And once in a while, if you look closely, he may even give you a smile. <laughs> On keyboards, Marty D'Amico. Say hi, Marty. Oh yeah, I love you too, Marty. Focus our attention to the rear of the stage. The heartbeat, the heartbeat of our group. He has been with us for more than 33 years. And before that, he was with the original American Touring Company of Jesus Christ Superstar. So if you will, on drum, let's have a nice round of applause for Lou. Adjusta, say hi, Lou. We love you. Oh, yeah. I'm going to move out of the way here to the other side. You know, we are proud to say that we have four original members of the group. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I introduced you to two of them earlier, but I introduced them to you as former Dell Sanders. But let's do that one more time, only this time as original Brooklyn Bridge members. So if you will, again, let's hear it for Fred Ferrara, one of our original members. Let's hear it for Les Couchy again, another original member. And, uh, right in the middle of it all. He has been with us from the very, very beginning on bass guitar and vocals. Let's hear it for Mr. Jim Rosica. Say hi, Jim. And we'd also like to acknowledge our, our sound crew. Don't know them all by name, but our very own sound engineer is out in the, uh, the truck right now. We hope. Where's the camera? Out there somewhere. His name is Smitty. Smitty and his crew, we have Anthony, and we have Front of the House mixing by Rob, all the way back there. So nice round of applause with, for them, please. And everyone else involved with what is going on this evening, we thank all of you. We really appreciate it. Yes, we do. One of the finest voices in the business today, and I think you'll agree with us, the one and only, singers out there. Yes. Well, eventually that guy with doo dee doo dee doo 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 I think it was from, uh, was from Hee Haw. Okay. American Idol, eat your hearts out.
is for you. Because we know that without you folks out there, we wouldn't be here. That's right. And we know that and we appreciate it. So we thank you for it. And also, I want to send this song out to all the men and women who are over in that other place doing their job so that we can do this. And we thank them for that. Yes, we do. Let's get it.
We've grown from Staten Island. Let's have a fine hand for them. We're welcome, sir. The group that certainly has both quantity and quality, one of the hottest groups in this country. They call themselves the Brooklyn Bridge. Welcome to the group that has moved in and up and stayed there. They're really wild. Ladies and gentlemen, the Brooklyn Bridge. Would you please welcome the dynamic voice of Mr. Johnny Maestro and our special guest stars, the Brooklyn Bridge. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of special, one of the specialist guys in rock and roll, and every time this guy appears with somebody in some place, it just causes everybody's heart to say, wow, we love you, Johnny Maestro. Johnny Maestro on the bridge. On, ladies and gentlemen, please, a warm welcome. Johnny Maestro on the Brooklyn Bridge. They taught you well. <laughs> Thanks so much. You do know that this is being filmed for a, a DVD. So uh, all you guys who are here with someone who you're not supposed to be with, <laughs> watch out, because the angels are watching. Show that uh, the Brooklyn Bridge did with Johnny Maestro. Johnny would take the mic and one of the uh, gentlemen, uh, Rob or Anthony, would take it and uh, give it to Smitty and it'd be packed away, of course, for the next show. But Johnny's personal microphone tonight is going to be retired and the production crew is going to present Johnny Maestro's microphone to his wife, Grace. So, uh, gentlemen, Smitty, Anthony, Rob. For the past... Um... 20 years or so, I would come out at the beginning of the show, make sure, uh, this is Johnny's office right here, make sure he had his halls, as Bob talked about, and his water and his, uh, his tea, or whatever we had for him. And um, uh, sometime, when, I remember one time we, uh, he, we were ran out of halls, and he's, he was in a panic. And um, <laughs> I had a few in the road case. They were open, so I washed them off and uh, rewrapped them. And sorry, John, he got through the show, though. <laughs> and um, so uh, towards the end, we had a, a little a special bond towards the end. Uh, I'll keep that memory to myself. Um, I just want to say thanks, John, for, uh, for everything. And uh, we love you, and I'm going to miss you a lot. And I'm going to pass this microphone to Smitty. Now I believe uh, Johnny, Johnny Maestro's daughter, Tracy Kane, would uh, like to do a eulogy. Tracy? First off, we want to thank everyone for being here today. You have all shown such a tremendous outpouring of love and support for our family at a most difficult time. Well, we may be feeling sad because our father, who, we, who was known as Daddy, was called to heaven, and we will miss him so much. We have all come together to celebrate his life. To his fans, he may have been known as Johnny Maestro. But to us, he was John Mastrangelo, a devoted husband, a loving and supportive dad, a patient and warm grandpa, an easygoing brother, uncle, and a true friend. He was a devoted family man. We, his children and grandchildren, adored him. 
Even though at times it was very difficult for him, he always tried to make time for us and was always there when we needed him most. Our father was a man who accomplished so much in his life and was an inspiration to us all. He continuously amazed everyone at how he transformed himself on and off the stage. He was a quiet, reserved man at home, yet the minute he stepped on stage, he emerged into the entertainer that we all know and love. His character, charisma, gentleness, kind eyes, and warm laugh were apparent to all of his fans, friends, and family alike. And even though his unique voice and tremendous talent were unlike any other, he remained humble, never boasted, and simply loved to sing. Singing was his passion, and he proved that every time he went out on that stage, especially during the last few months, when the pain was too much to bear, he somehow found the strength and courage to still put on an amazing show. He did not want to disappoint his fans. The show must go on. He not only enjoyed what he did for a living, he enjoyed his life. He enjoyed spending the holidays and vacationing with his friends and family. He loved living in Florida, being on the water, going out on his boat and fishing. And let's not forget about his love of food paired with a good bottle of red wine. For many of us, it was a cold February day in New York when we had to say goodbye to the man we love as he decided he wanted to spend the time at his home in Florida. We didn't want to see him go, but in our hearts we knew he was happy to rest his tired body in a place he loved, watching beautiful sunsets and going out on his boat for the very last time. It wasn't just talent that determined his longevity in his career. He was a genuine human being. In all our years, we never heard an ill word uttered about our father or from him. He set a wonderful example of how one could live their life, making their dreams come true without malice or negativity. He was simply an amazing man. We always say when we lose the people we love, they are gone, but not forgotten. We will always remember John Mastrangelo because his legacy will live on, not just through his music, but through the love he gave to his family and friends. His legacy will live on, not just as a golden voice, but as the smile he passed on to his children and grandchildren. His legacy will live on because whenever you think of John Mastrangelo, you will remember a man who lived his dream and was an inspiration to everyone who had the pleasure of knowing such a gentleman. And if you keep our father, John Mastrangelo, in your mind and your heart, you'll never walk alone. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. I just want to say before I bring out the uh, current members and past members of the Brooklyn Bridge that it's been a privilege to be part, a small part of this memorial to one of the greatest voices of all time. And I, I thank the family and the people who uh, allowed me to do this. Thanks so much. It's been, a, been an honor. Current members and former members, please. Thank you, thank you. For those that are interested in making donations, Grace Mastrangelo has decided that any funds would be going to the Maestro Scholarship Fund for the underprivileged children who are pursuing arts and music, and it's through the Columbus Citizens Foundation. 
The information is on the internet, and I have a very special private letter from the foundation that I will present to Grace later. It's a very personal letter, and I think you're gonna love it. We're gonna start off with a message from uh, one of the original members, Shelley Davis, who couldn't be here today. His father's very ill in Florida. And uh, his message is, Johnny changed my life with his voice and with his loving, gentle soul. I was the baby of the band, and John always encouraged my strength, accepted my weakness, and taught me what it meant to be a true professional musician and entertainer. He continues to inspire me. All who knew him and all who were fortunate to know his grace, talent, and love, Shelley Davis. This is my personal message for John. There's so much to say about Johnny. Being with him was clearly destiny in its calling for me. In the late 50s, always looking for a place to harmonize. In between periods of basketball games, I remember going into an empty auditorium with a couple of the Dell Satins all alone on a, on a stage, a lonely figure practicing his guitar. As we got closer, we realized that sitting there was the lead singer of the Crests, Johnny Maestro, whose song, Sweetest One, and My One Eater, uh, were one of the first songs we learned to sing on the street corners of New York. At that time, little did I know that after a decade of sharpening my vocal tools, ginging everywhere with the Dell Satins and a stint with the U.S. Army in Vietnam, that I would be spending the next 42 years as a friend, a partner, and a brother with Johnny Maestro. His pressure, these pressures, how precious these 42 years were. Countless hours in the studio where Johnny showed his great talent as a producer, creating the sounds on most of the band's CDs and DVDs. The countless miles on the road, Johnny always performing at his best, regardless of the size of the venue. The sharing of our lives, molding us into one big musical family, Johnny stood steadfast as a friend and partner. With friends, family, and band, he was always one of the guys. There was always a feeling of comfort when Johnny stepped on the stage. Looking back, little did I know that something, something great was happening. Johnny, one of the guys, was reaching and touching thousands of people. Song after song, Johnny became the real maestro, a musical wonder, an icon. I will miss Johnny greatly. I will miss sharing more of our lives with him. I will always have him, his music, his spirit, and his performance. He will lead us into the future in his professionalism, and we will use his example forever. Thank you, John. I love you. We all love you. I lost a good friend in John Maestro and a brother. And it's hard to put in words what he means to all of us. I used to enjoy watching when we used to perform on stage and looking at the audience and watching the people just mesmerized by his voice. And when he sang, Unchained melody, and he hit those notes. The people were just floored, and, and the minute the song ended, and they were rising, giving such a big hand, and I could see the smile in his eyes, and how much he enjoyed that. And uh, 
You know, when I first met Johnny, we were rehearsing uh, some songs of those hands, and he was so quiet, he didn't say a word. And I said, does this guy talk at all? <laughs> I mean, but then, as we got to know him, and saw that he was just a quiet, reserved guy, and a lot of people sometimes kind of took that the wrong way, that he was standoffish, but he was not. And the people who knew him, deep down inside, knew Johnny was not like that person at all. He was a loving, loving person. And I feel very fortunate and lucky for this three years to have worked with a man. Hey, Johnny, I feel blessed that God gave me that opportunity. Thank you very much. Before I s speak my piece, I've been asked to uh, read a couple of letters, and uh, this first one reads, Johnny and I met, whoops, let me get in the light here. Johnny and I met in 1959 at the Palace Theater when I heard the crest sing for the first time. I said, who's that? Johnny's voice sailed throughout the theater like a soft wind summer breeze. I knew I was hearing somebody extraordinary and gifted. As we would say in rock and roll, the Rolls Royce of doo-wop voices. He had it. The week before his passing, we had a wonderful and lovely conversation about Christ. I, told, I talked to him about Jesus preparing a place for us. He said, I need to be close to him right now. I said, we all do. I also talked with Grace Maestro. That, uh, I also talked to Grace Meister that week for almost an hour. She is just so loving and caring, I thought to myself. We singers have great taste in women. What love Grace has for Johnny, her sweetness, dignity, and strength, I believe escorted Johnny into the vestibule of heaven with such great love and care. Our prayers are with you, Grace. I emailed a photo uh, to him of me on the Brooklyn Bridge telling him I recently walked over it and was thinking of him. He laughed quietly. I felt him smile knowingly and wink. I told him I loved him. I would always tell him, you know, Johnny, you sing my songs much, 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 much better than I sing your songs. He giggled. He did sing You'll Never Walk Alone Like an Angel. Johnny, we thank you for the beautiful trip you took us on. Love and peace, my friend. I will miss you. Dion.